Hey Hayden, this is Miss Tracy and I am looking at lesson 65, 66 for you per your request. And let's go over, let's begin with number six. Um, and here is it's seven times square root of five minus the square root of five plus five times the square root of three minus three times the square root of three. And then what does that equal? And then you have two blanks right here. Um, so let's start by looking at like terms. So we have a seven and a negative square root of five. Now, whenever you have this radical here, you have a minus and there's no coefficient. There's always an invisible one right there in front of the radical. We treat this just like a variable. So that's going to be seven minus one. That's going to be six times the square root of five. And then we have a positive five square root of three minus three square root of three. So that's going to be plus two times the square root of three. So those are your two terms that are going to go in here. Six times the square root of five and two times the square root of three. And it looks like you got this one right. But I think where you messed up, you got this one wrong. It's because you forgot that this is always got a one in front of it. Just pretend for a second that this is an X. So if this were seven X minus X, you would know to put that one right there. We treat these radicals exactly the same way. So if there's not a coefficient in front of it, drop a one in there. And then that way you can account for it more accurately. All right, let's look at the next one. Um, so we had eight times the square root of seven minus four times the square root of 11 minus three times the square root of seven plus seven times the square root of 11. So we can see we've got this term, this term, this term, and this term. I'm going to rearrange them and say eight times square root of seven minus three times the square root of seven. So that's gonna be five times the square root of seven, okay? Now we have a negative four times the square root of 11 and a positive seven times the square root of 11. Now seven minus four, that's gonna be positive three times the square root of 11. So that would be your two terms for that problem. All right, you're starting to see that. Okay, let's move on. Looks like you got the rest of those square root problems um, like that, correct? So let's look at number eight. It says Jamie's scores were 75, 80, 88, and 93. What was the weighted average of his scores if the test scores were weighted 1, 2, 3, and 4 in that order? And then it also says you're going to round to tenths. So what you do is you say 75 times the weight. So times 1. Actually, it looks better if you do it like this because it's easier to add. One times 75 plus two times two, 80 plus three times 88 plus four times 93. So we would multiply all of those, add them together, and divide by one plus two plus three plus four. So that would be 10. Six plus four is 10. So whatever that number is, divided by 10. So let's figure out what that number is. All right, so we've got, all right, so this is 75 plus 160 
plus, let's get that calculator back up here, um, 88 times 3, 264. plus 4 times 93, 372. So we add all those together. So plus 264 plus 160 plus 75. It's 871. Now if we divide that by 10, we're just going to move the decimal place in one. So the answer is 87.1. Okay, that is what you're looking for. All right, let's look at the next page. Let's see which one you, you struggle with next. That would be number 13 for you. And this one is um, simplify and it says 5 square root of 20 minus 6 times the square root of 32. Okay. So let's see. So I know that I can take this and say 5 times 4 times 5. So that would come out and be a 2. So we multiply that. So it would be 10 times the square root of 5 minus. And this would be um, let's see 4 times 4 times 2. So it would be 16, yeah, 16 times 2. So I know I could take a 2 out for that and a 2 out for that. So we have 6 times 2 times 2. So it would be 12 times 2 would be 24 times the square root of 2. And that would be the correct response. That's the first one. That's the second one. That's as simplified as we can get it. We can't do anything else because they're not like terms. Does that make sense? All right, so let's look at the next one. We draw a line here. We have 2 times square root of 45 minus 3 square root of 20. So here... I know I can say 9 times 5 and then for 20 we've already done 20 once before we did it up here that's 4 times 5 so that would be a 2 and that would be a 3 right 2 times 3 that's 6 times the square root of 5 minus 3 times 2 that's 6 times the square root of 5 well, 6 minus 6, that's going to be 0. It's the same value minus the same value. So the answer is 0. Let's look at the next one. So we have to simplify the square root of 70 million. Well, all we have to do is count the zeros. So this is going to be 7 times 10 million, which is the same thing as 7 times, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right? So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We split the zeros evenly, so we can bring out this pair of thousands. 
So that's a thousand times one right there. You always have that one in front. So it's one thousand times the square root of seven times ten. So it'd be seventy. And that would be your answer. Okie dokie. Not so hard. Not so hard. Let's clear this. All right, so continuing on, it's more of the same. So you factor the radical and see if you can reduce it. And that's the way you would do those problems. All right, so let's look at lesson 68. Looks like number eight is the one that you started having trouble. So M over Y minus Y over one over Y minus one. All right, so what you're going to do to solve this is you first have to find a common denominator. So you would find that by putting this over one, turning that into a fraction, doing the same thing here. So now we see that our common denominator, we know we have a one in front of the y. So we have a one over here. So we need to multiply this by y in order to get a common denominator. So y over y. And the same thing here. We have one y and a one. So we need to multiply this by y over y, right? So that ends up being m minus y squared over y divided by y, actually it's 1 minus 1 minus y over y. Okay, so this is y squared. Let me write that better. So now we can do keep it, change it, flip it. So we keep the same one on the top. So that equals m minus y squared over y times y over 1 minus y. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel the y's, and then that becomes m minus y squared over 1 minus y. Easy peasy. Okay, let me double check. Yes, that is the correct response. That's your answer for that problem. So you see how that works? Find your common denominator, and then keep it, change it, flip it, and then you can cancel what you can cancel so that you can simplify. Let's look at the next one. We only had a couple more here. So we had x to the negative 2 plus y x to the negative 1 over x to the negative 1 y squared. So what's tricky about this is these negative um, exponents means that you can turn this into a fraction. So this is actually 1 over x squared plus y over x. Remember that? Remember how we take those negatives and we turn them, we put them down and they become positive. So this one would be y squared over x because it's x to the negative one. So this is what we actually have. So we can see when we look here that we've got x squared and then x to the one. So we just need to multiply this times x over x to have the same denominator. So when we do that, we get one plus xy over x squared and that fraction in the denominator stays the same. Now we can do keep it, change it, flip it. 1 plus xy over x squared times x over y squared. So there's two of these x's here. You can rewrite that to make canceling a little bit easier and call that xx because that's x squared. And then you can cancel this x and this x, right? So now what you have is 1 
plus xy over xy squared because x times y squared is xy squared. And then I believe that's right. Yep, that's your answer. And I think actually I left this in natural fall instead of alphabetical order. So I think it's yx. So that's fine too. All right, so let's do the last one. This one should be a piece of cake. We have a over b plus 1 over b over a over b minus 1 over b. They already have the same denominator. We do not have to do anything to find a common denominator. We just have to write it together as one fraction. So this is a plus 1 over b over a minus 1 over b. So keep it, change it, flip it would look like a plus 1 over b times b over a minus 1. So this would cancel this one and then that would be a plus 1 over a minus 1. Easy peasy. And that was the last one of the ones that you asked me about that I have. Um, if there are any more, please let me know and we can look at those. And that's all I've got for right now. I will uh, talk to you later.